The star of Mulan 2020 is Liu Yifei. She was born in Wuhan, China. And Mulan 2020, it went just about as well as what else recently came for Wuhan, China. <laughs> all of Hollywood was a buzz about Crazy Rich Asians, the first movie in quite a while that had an all-Asian cast. And much was made about the fact that it was all Asians, directed by an Asian. Now in 2020, we have Mulan, the live-action Disney remake of the classic cartoon. This movie stars a lot of famous people in Asian cinema, especially people from China. So we end up with Donnie Yen, Liu Fei. We have Jet Li from American American actors of Asian descent. We have Jason Scott Lee, Jun Yu, Rosalind Chow. You know Keiko O'Brien. She's in this. We have classic Asian stars. Pei Pei Chang. Pei Pei Chang was Silver Fox in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. She was one of the Cheng Pei Pei kicked off the female martial artist revolution. Back in the 60s, you had especially Taiwanese men. They didn't like their women going to see handsome men in cinema. So they started making movies about women who kicked ass. And we don't hear anything about an all-Asian, all-star cast being in this movie. Why is that? It's because this movie is terrible. The global pandemic was the best thing to happen to Mulan 2020. Otherwise, this would have been slaughtered at the box office. Although I am not a believer of cultural appropriation, this movie is by far the worst example of what happens when corporations culturally appropriate something from another part of the world in order to fill an agenda. Let's take a look at the history of Hua Mulan. Now, Hua Mulan is a very traditional Chinese story, and it's all about filial piety. In Confucianism, the man, the father, the grandfather, whoever, is the head of the family. And all comes from him. Much like they believed in heaven, there was one supreme god, and all the other gods and spirits had to um, follow this heavenly emperor. And on the earth, you had the emperor who ruled China. All his subjects had to follow him. On an individual family level, that was the father. And that's why sons are so valued, because a son will one day take over this position. They will carry on the family name and the family legacy. Women would be married off into other people's families. What we have in Hua Mulan is we have the story of a girl. And she was a girl. She was not yet a woman. Her father was too old, depending on the version of the story, enfeebled or he was injured in uh, a, a war before. And she had to make the choice. She didn't want him to go. She didn't want her father to suffer. So she went in his place. Now, this is a very common thing. You see, for example, the uh, Yang Shilang, which is the story of... A father who was a nobleman and he took his army to battle Mongolians. He was betrayed by other Chinese and his 10 sons went to rescue him. And only one returned, the greatest of them all, Yang Yan Zhao. So bam, now you know where the name's from. In Disney's 1998 movie, we see this theme carried out where Mulan is somewhat of a goofball, but she's not very capable. She's not an athletic woman. She's not a strong woman. She doesn't have some sort of inner power. She has to work every step of the way to become a quote-unquote warrior. And even then, she wasn't a very good one. But she used what she had. She used her smarts and she used her grit and determination to eventually save China. In Disney's 2020 remake, we don't see this at all. In the beginning, we see a shot of her training with a staff, and she's very good. It doesn't really make sense why her father would have trained her, but okay, whatever. And then they talk about Chi. And for the love of God, I hate Disney, and I will hate them forever for this. They talk about she was born with a lot of Chi, which is essential life energy. Okay, the Chi being essential life energy was 
invented by a French banker in the early 1900s who in his book wrote, I am calling Chi life energy because I don't know how else to translate it. The man was not a translator. He just lived in China for a while. So we have this idea that Hua Mulan was filled with superpowers. They never ever go on to explain how Chi allows you to do things, how you develop it. She's just always seen as like flying around on rooftops and stuff. Okay, so she's basically young Superman. Hmm. Okay, all right, Disney. Now, we do see one other character who has quote unquote chi, played by the immaculate Gong Li, who I had to say, holy crap, is she still acting? But man, Disney got her. That's a, awesome. So she is a witch, which is very interesting because in classical Chinese literature, uh, a witch, a wunyu, is not the same as uh, someone who has chi, someone who is a warrior. They were two separate things. But, of course, Disney, not caring about other cultures, just conflates them. And adding to this confusion, Gong Li's character can transform into a bird. She has this, like, hand with a talon, like, changing the shape of her hand, I guess. Uh, and she becomes a shadow that inhabits people's bodies. So she has the same powers as Mulan, but Mulan just kicks people a lot. She, like, jump kicks spears, uh, like some European soccer star would jump kick a ball into a net. It was a very strange choice. It's hard to see how one equates with the other. This giving Mulan superpower from the beginning really changes the tone of the movie. From the 1998 animated feature where Hua Mulan uses her grit, she uses her own effort, and slowly becomes better in the amazing song montage scene, Be a Man. And instead, it's just about people not liking women. But the big problem with this is it's not really done well. It's not really developed. There's only one scene where some of the male soldiers are kind of laughing at women. And it's where Hua Mulan, who is calling herself Hua Jun, talks about what he wants in a woman. And Mulan says, oh, I want a woman that uh, is funny and uh, she's smart and has opinions. And they all laugh at that. Now, okay, that was actually a fair scene. The problem is it's never developed anywhere else in the movie. We have at the beginning the famous matchmaker scene where you never get the sense that the womanly things are bad. The, the matchmaker, for some reason, is trying to teach her how to pour tea correctly and like, hey, guys like uh, women who are quiet and this and that. But to be honest, this is very good advice for the time. She is absolutely right. Of that time, those things were valued in women. And most women, you weren't going to have a position outside of the home. If you didn't have a man to take care of you, if your father died and, you know, you would soon be taken advantage of. Marrying was your path to a decent life. You were provided with housing and food. You were given a purpose. It was considered a very honorable thing. So it's a very strange situation to me that Disney would want to denigrate this. Whereas the original Mulan story, we don't have this where she was, uh, she took on male qualities, where she was a fighter, she loved to scrap. No, none of this. We didn't see that she was a, a very willful child. No, in spite of being that good person, she had to step up and do something to save her father, to honor her father. And that's completely removed. And it really shows. In addition to Disney telling a foreign culture 
that Disney knows what would make their culture better. We also have very strange visuals and movie construction. This whole movie looks like Chinese movies. It somehow doesn't have a real quality. Now, the 3D is generally better than most Chinese movies, but you watch this and like, holy crap, that's a lot of 3D. And part of the problem with all of this overdone 3D is the tone of the movie. It's hard for me to know exactly what they intend. For example, at the matchmaking session in the beginning of the movie, we have a very goofy scene where Mulan tries to trap a spider without killing it. Very nice Mulan, very Buddhist. But things go wrong and teapots go flying and everything and she ends up standing on one leg, catching a pot like on her head and a cup on her foot and everything. And it's just very silly. Like, is this a serious movie or a silly movie? When you have a cartoon, it's much easier to balance because you already buy in, look, this is animated, this is not real. Whereas in a live action film, you really need to set the tone comedy, not comedy. So then most of the other stuff is not comedy with the exception of a few jokes. Hua Jun won't shower. Obviously, she doesn't want people to see her naked. So there's the joke that she stinks. Okay, fine. But is it a comedy? Is it serious? I don't know how to take things anymore. The Phoenix, which is interesting that they would allow her house to have a statue of a Phoenix outside of it. In Chinese culture, it was very regulated what is basically garden gnomes you would be allowed to have outside of your house. Only the imperial family should have a dragon or a phoenix because those are related. The emperor's the dragon and the phoenix is the empress. So her house's spirit animal is the phoenix. It shows up like a very poorly CGI, like something I would expect to see in a 1990s TV show, shows up throughout the movie, I guess guiding her along or something, but it's never really explained. And part of this problem can be solved if you see the 1998 animated film. So they had a, they had Eddie Murphy as Mushu, who was what I assume doing an audition of Donkey from Shrek, where he's all over the place, he's crazy, him and his cricket friend. The two of them were the goofballs. Hua Mulan was always very serious, so we could take her seriously in everything that she did, and all the goofiness was put onto these characters and then her trio of male friends. In this movie, they try to have everything in one, and it just doesn't work because I don't know how to take her. In March of 2019, I made a video saying that the Marvel movie Shang-Chi would be extremely popular in China because Disney in no way would use previous Yellow Pearl racist content like Fu Manchu, and they would make it very, very appreciative of Chinese culture. I now have to say, I was probably wrong. After seeing Disney flip the birds to China and Chinese culture, why would I think Marvel movies are gonna be any better? This movie clearly has an agenda that's very poorly implemented. They're lucky that there are almost no movies in the theater right now, and most movies in the US are shut down. Because if this were shown, this would be an instant bomb. All right, everyone. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. What did you think of Mulan 2020? How did it compare to the classic 1998 version? If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It really helps the channel. I'll see you guys soon.